This is the cross section of the sural separators, which can be used to measure the thermal conductivity of a material. One of the most frequently asked questions for structured assays is regarding sural separators. So it is really important that you have a full understanding of the apparatus. First, I will be discussing the parts of the apparatus. Here we have the metal bar. The metal bar is covered by insulating materials. And this whole thing is inside this wood box shown by this margin. Then we have four thermometers. Two of them are connected to the metal bar. The other two are connected to these water inlets and water outlets. Then we have the steam chamber. This is called the steam chamber. This is the steam inlet and this is the steam outlet. Always the upper inlet, the steam should be sent through the upper inlet and this exited, it should be exited through the lower outlet. So we can make sure that the steam chamber is always filled with the steam with enough pressure. Other important part is the constant pressure apparatus. It provides a steady water flow to the apparatus. The steady water flow from the constant pressure apparatus enters here to the service apparatus. And the temperature of the water inlet can be measured by this thermometer. When the water flow flows through these copper pipes that is coiled around the end of the metal bar. Finally, the steady water flow leaves the apparatus via this pipe and it is connected to the beaker shown here. And the temperature of the water at the outlet can be measured by this thermometer that is T3. Now that I have discussed all the main parts, let's see how to measure the thermal conductivity using the apparatus. If we can measure the heat rate through the metal bar, we can measure the thermal conductivity using this equation here. Q over T is the rate of heat flow through the metal bar. K is the thermal conductivity. Capital A is the cross section of the metal bar. And T down, T down, those are the two temperatures at these two points. And simple L is the length between the thermometers. When using the equation, it is really important that the heat flow is constant or heat flow through the metal bar is steady. Otherwise, we cannot use this equation. Soil separators is designed to get a steady heat flow through this metal bar. Heat is provided to the metal bar by steam. Then the heat travels along the metal bar. Then the heat is absorbed by the water coming from the constant pressure apparatus, then it leaves the system via these pipes. To gain a steady state, the rate of heat coming from the steam should be equal to the rate of heat leaving with the water. Once the steady state has been achieved, we can get the temperature readings and simply substitute them in the equation to get the thermal conductivity value. But how can we notice whether the system is in a steady state? Once the heat starts flowing through the pipe, the temperature readings keeps increasing. Then after a while, like for 10 or 15 minutes, the temperature readings become steady. It does not increase further. Then, at that moment, the system has reached steady state. So those are the temperature readings to be substituted 
in the equation. Okay, now let's consider how to operate the operators step by step. So the steps are important. The steps should be in order. You cannot skip any step and keep continuing the experiment. The first step is to open this wooden box. You can open the wooden box. It's designed like that. Then the cross-section of the metal bar on this side is visible. Using a vernier caliper, the diameter reading can be taken. We need two diameter readings. Both readings should be taken normally to each other. Then let's say uh, those diameter readings are D1 and D2. Then we need to take the average of this value and the average diameter value can be considered as the diameter of the metal bar. We just simply have to add these two and divide it by two. Then this is the reading of diameter. Once you get the diameter reading, cross-sectional area of the metal bar can be gained using this equation 5 d squared over 4 we simply have to substitute d element here now that we know the cross-sectional area of the metal bar it can be substituted here as capital A the next step is to measure the simple L value the simple L value is the distance between these two thermometers T1 and T2 okay. initially these thermometers are not inset so these are these two holes inside the cell's apparatus for to take this measurement as well you can use the burning calibre using the outer jaws and inner jaws of one caliper, we can measure the distance between these two holes. Now we have two readings for simple L. Let's say L1 and L2. Let's take the average of those two readings and we can get the average value as the distance between these two, two thermometers. Now we have a value for simple L as well. Now that we have values for cross sectional area, capital A, and length, simple L, we can close the wooden box and provide heat insulation for the metal bar. The next step is to insert the thermometers. When you insert the thermometers, there must be good thermal contact between the cell separators, I mean the metal bar, and the thermometers. So to ensure the good thermal contact, we have to apply a little bit of mercury into these holes. Now that the setup is complete, we can send the steam through the upper inlet into the steam chamber. So, the steam chamber will completely be filled with steam. Then the water outlet from the constant pressure apparatus should be connected to the T4 thermometer chamber. So, the incoming stream of water would meet and oppose the heat coming along the metal bar. Now the steam chamber is filled with the steam and the water is flowing through these pipes. The experiment has begun. Since the beginning of the experiment, take temperature readings of thermometers at 5 minutes intervals. Once the system has reached steady state, record the temperature readings theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 and theta 4. 
and those readings can be substituted in the equation here to find the thermal conductor. Now we know theta 1 and theta 2 values to be substituted in the equation here. But why do we need uh, theta 3 and theta 4 values? We need those two values to find the rate of heat flow through the metal bar. Let's see how to find the rate of heat using these two temperature readings, theta 3 and theta 4. The rate of heat flow is Q over T. Once we know Q over T, we can find thermal conductivity since it is the only term that is unknown. In order to find Q over T, you have to measure the mass flow rate of water stream leaving the system. It is assumed that the heat flowing through the metal bar is completely absorbed by the water leaving the system within a certain period of time. So, the rate of heat flow through the metal bar is equal to the rate of heat absorbed by the water. So, if we know the rate of heat absorbed by water, we know the rate of heat flow through the metal bar as well. Therefore, we are going to measure the rate of heat absorbed by water. We know that the temperature at water inlet is theta 4 and temperature of water outlet is theta 3, meaning that the temperature of water has increased from theta 4 to theta 3. In order to find QOT, you need this equation. Q equals mc theta. Just simply divide both sides of the equation by simple t time, then you can get the rate of heat flow. M over t is the mass flow rate of water stream. I'll discuss how to measure that term experimentally later. C is the specific heat capacity of water that is 4200 joules per kelvin per kilogram then theta that is the increase of temperature theta 3 minus theta 4 then this equation can be written like this m over t 4200 theta 3 minus theta 4 Okay, let's see how to measure the mass flow rate, that is M over T, experimentally. For that, we need a beaker and a stopwatch. This beaker is initially weighted. The water coming from the T3 outlet can be collected to the beaker. As we collect water, the stopwatch should be started. Once about 500 milliliters of water is collected to this beaker, we have to measure the mass of this beaker with water. Let's say that measurement is M1. Then the beaker is initially weighted. Let's say the mass of the beaker is M0. So if you subtract these two values, you can get the mass of water collected to this beaker. So you see we have to subtract these two values. So this is the mass of water collected to the beaker. Then you simply have to divide that by the time measurement. Then you can get the mass flow rate. That is m over t. Now that we have measured the mass flow rate m over t, we can simply substitute that in this equation here and calculate q over t. That is the heat flow rate through this metal bar. So the q over t 
snow. These temperature values, the cross sectional area, and the length are measured initially. The only term we don't know is the thermal conductivity. So, by substituting all the terms that we have measured in this equation, we can calculate the thermal conductivity, that is, C 